Hi and good evening on this Holy Monday. My name is Pastor Ian and I want to welcome our Glenbrook Church family and also others who are joining us for this evening's devotion. I'm, we're going to be taking a look uh, this evening at John uh, chapter 12. As Jesus nears Jerusalem, we are invited into the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus who have put on a small dinner party for Jesus as the honored guest. We know that Jesus enjoyed the hospitality of this home on more than one occasion, but this is a special dinner party, not simply because Jesus is present, but Lazarus is present, recently raised from the dead. The recently empty place at the table is now filled again, and this brings joy uh, to this family. It is a wonderful scene. There is good food and there is good conversation, a time to linger, an opportunity for gratitude and love to be expressed to Jesus, and indeed for the, good, the, the new life that he has brought uh, to, this, to this family. But then there is something that happens that changes the mood of this dinner party. Offering the very best that she has, Mary moves towards Jesus and kneels down and anoints his feet with a costly perfume and then follows up with wiping the precious oil on his feet with her hair. The perfume fills the room and her devotion captivates everyone watching on and it's an extravagant act of unrestrained gratitude and love given to Jesus. We can imagine the eating and the conversation diminishing down to silence as everyone watches. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? It's an awkward moment as Mary's devotion is visibly offered. But it is Judas who speaks up. And it is not because of the way that Mary is behaving, but it is because in his opinion it seems to be such a waste. The money that was used to purchase the perfume, well, as he says, it could have been given to the poor. Mary's extravagant act of love becomes a boardroom agenda. What the guests don't know is that Judas is more interested in dipping his hand into the treasury for his own purposes than any compassion for the poor. So suddenly the mood of the dinner party changes from one of celebration and thanksgiving to one of judgment and of conflict. And so what does Jesus do? What does Jesus say? Well, Jesus defends Mary's extravagant offering as beautiful, as appropriate, because even though it was given as a spontaneous act of loving devotion to him for something that he had done in the past, Jesus also interprets it as a prophetic action of what is going to happen in the future, and in particular, his coming death. Jesus says this as he looks around the room. He says, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The day of my burial? You will always have the poor, but you will not always have me? Wait a minute, Jesus. When did this become all about your burial? When, what has this got to do with your absence? We're celebrating new life and resurrection with our brother Lazarus. And by the way, I thought you always had a heart for the poor. You will always have the poor, but you will not always have me. Jesus says. Judas is not wrong in advocating for the needs of the poor and compassion even for those who are most vulnerable. This was high on Jesus' priorities. But it is not about a competition between justice and compassion. Judas' attitude is exposed because it is about love. It is about a love that does all it can for the other. And of course, maybe this is what is 
hidden from those who are gathered. Jesus links Mary's act to a preparation of his body for burial. This meal foreshadows another meal in which bread is broken and a cup is given. The feet that are lovingly anointed with perfume will be driven through with nails for a Savior who will go through a brutal crucifixion out of an eternal and an extravagant love for you and for me. And it would cost much more than an expensive perfume. So on this Holy Monday, we journey with Jesus towards Good Friday and Easter. And we are invited to this dinner party. We have all been invited to look on and to see extravagant love. And like Mary, we offer up our lives in humble repentance for our own hypocrisy, in deep gratitude for the grace that we have received, and in extravagant love for the one who first loved us. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, you are with us at all times and in all circumstances. We give to you our gratitude for your goodness and for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. During this Holy Week, we pray for a deepening awareness of your extravagant love for us as we reflect on the love which you have given to us at such a great cost. This evening we bring before you our needs and our concerns. We are at times short-sighted and self-centered. We are at times insensitive to those around us. We are quick to judge and to speak and slow to listen and to forgive. So we ask that you would forgive us and that you would heal us such that your love would enlighten our actions and our words. We pray for our world tonight. Because of our own limitations, we sometimes feel more like spectators than servants. These are hard days for those who are managing disease and facing unemployment, separated from those whom they love, those who have lost hope. So we ask that we would not merely watch, but also pray. And if that is all that we can do for this moment, may it be more than enough to bring your comfort and hope to another. May your spirit come to all of us this evening so that your righteousness, justice, and peace will be goals that we all may share. Give us a good night's rest. And whatever our activities for tomorrow might be, by your Spirit, may we follow in the way of Christ. Live in the joy and the love and in the service of Jesus. It is in his name that we pray. And all God's people said,